Wow, that was a really interesting session we had before. I don't know if any of y'all uh, stayed for that one, but wasn't that fascinating talking yeah. about e-sport? It was really, really fantastic. Now, I'm really excited to uh, sit with you, Esther, and to talk, uh, dive in a little bit more around our theme of uh, sport and, and technology and really talking about how this interfaces with the consumer as well. Now, before we get into that, I just want to, to take all of you, maybe get a little insight about your life in sport. Um, I've had a life in sport as a, mm -hmm. a five-time Olympian for Canada, but you certainly had a life in sport too that led you to where you are today in this area of sport and technology. Yeah, so uh, I was a national swimmer. Actually, I did the scuba diving swimming with the fins until the day when I broke my collarbone. And not once, but I broke it seven times. Wow. And it was a series of mistakes and Doctors are m taking my x-ray pictures and, and misinterpreting this data. And in the end, I spent about 10, 10 years. I had four surgeries. Wow. And finally, I'm, I'm sort of recovered. But I don't want this today to be a horror story, so <laughs> <laughs> let's move on something. But we're going to get back to that data part, which really inspired yeah. you to be the technical founder of your company. So let's talk a little bit about how you got from being in the pool, swimming with the fins, as you said, and then later led to your education and getting into the tech space. So tell me about that transition there. Yeah, exactly. So I went uh, for university for industrial design and mechatronics, and I was really interested about biomimetic robots. That's you look at the nature, you look at birds fly, you understand their thinking why they fly, uh, fly this way, and you take this inspiration and make and make this locomotion, locomotion happen. You, you build it as robots. So since I like swimming, I built a fish. A fish from soft silicone, from hard plastic, and I created the electronics. I, I made this all this brain from Arduino board, mm -hmm. and it turned out to be a pretty good fish. It swam very fast because it left the same vortices behind that would help her push forward. And that's when I learned first about biomechanics mm -hmm. and the importance, importance that how little changes in nature can have such a big effect in performance. Now, the, the world of sport has, has come a long way from you know, where we are today with biomechanics, e-sport, drone sport, all of this new technology. But you know, it's come a long way from being in the fields of Olympia and the Olympics and in the old fields. But there's been a little inspiration that you've taken from that to where you are today. Yes, I was reading about and researching about the Olympics went back 2,500 years. Mm -hmm. And I discovered this ancient Greeks were just like me. In because during way? the day, they work really hard, and they spent all their free time to improve themselves. It went both physically and also mentally. And in sports education was also part of their curriculum. Mm -hmm. And being sporty was the duty of every single man. Yeah. Plato, the great philosopher, he had abs. I'm sure. <laughs> and what's fascinating to me, that they were training in a world where they didn't know how to measure absolute performance. So they had some kind of technologies, but looking today, that was unrealistic numbers. So their sense of motivation and performance came from stories and legends. Mm -hmm. And that's why you see so many big statues, and even the yeah. heroes you can see and go and watch in Hollywood. So this motivation worked very, very well. Now let's go to the athlete of today, and motivation is still a big part of it. I don't care how much technology, how many things you got you know, coming out of you, a lot of it is still here, right? Yeah, we talked that. about that earlier. So how is your specific product, or products like yours, helping today's athletes to, be, to get on the podium and to have long careers? Mm -hmm. So what I see in the IoT sports training, there's an evolution. So we started with general fitness trackers like pedometers that count your steps, but they're a great motivator to see how much steps you made today, but they don't really tell you what are your mistakes. And it's the same with a uh, single, single sensor swing analyzer. They're a great yep. indicator, what's your result, but they don't show your mistakes. And so what's happening today is we are moving into the specialization. So uh, I'm the founder of a company, and we are making motion capture sensors. And mm -hmm. these, these devices, just we are taking the most basic feature, the human motion. And then by putting these sensors, you, you will see yourself in 3D right on your smartphone screen. So you have a complete biomechanics toolkit in your pocket. 
but it's and still I think very. You have some in your pocket, don't you? And yes, you've got let some me in show you. Now. <laughs> so this is the devices we are making, and it's actually six of them. So we really wanted to make it very small and invisible because it's something very important for mm -hmm. athletes that it doesn't. It's comfortable yeah. and it doesn't interfere with your motion. And what's interesting that um, so we have this um, and we have the capability of analyzing the motion. Mm -hmm. But what we foresee coming is the personalization. So when you see what you are doing and how to get into the right position, for example, taking yoga, you must keep your back as you are bending forward. But while you do so, the system is continuously monitoring your body, looking for asymmetries, looking which of your muscle groups are more developed, um, how is your hamstrings, are they flexible, are they, are they stiff? And they are taking all this information to give you personalized feedback, personalized classes, how to improve the most efficient way without getting injured. And I'm sure this is something you have seen as an elite athlete before. Yeah, it's, and this is yeah. just getting to the consumer level. Exactly, but as an athlete, uh, the average athlete has what, maybe 10 to 13 different kinds of uh, you know, medical people around them, whether it's the, the, the acupuncturist, the masseuse, the family doctor, the team doctor, the, you know, the sleep therapist. There's so many different uh, types of help and support. So how does yours, in that sense, how do you interpret that? How do you make sure that that's working and integrated with all these other uh, you know, things that are around the athlete and the consumer, of course, too? Yeah, so that's why I think, the, as we can see now, this, we have a, so that's one in my pocket, the other would be a mobile phone, where you have a bunch <laughs> of applications together. Yep. And then now with the, uh, the health kit and everything, you can integrate the step counts together. And what we are doing also, we are a platform company. So we have these motion capture sensors, mm -hmm. and we are working with different developers all over the world. And they use our technology to bring motion capture apps and products uh, in different verticals. And it's also sports. So it's a yeah. unified platform. So it's also sports, but we also realize that healthcare is a, one of our major Absolutely. user base. Yep. I can imagine, yep. yeah. Yeah, sure. so that's also for rehabilitation, but not just thinking about orthopedics, but also we have users in Parkinson's and stroke and that's great. all this minor motor. Yep. Yep. So I think the platform approach would be something to bring together all the data. Let's talk about the privacy issues because that's in the news every yeah. day and it's only going to get uh, get more and more. So tell me your thoughts on that and how you are, you are mitigating that in your mm -hmm. own business right now. Yeah. So it's a big day today because tomorrow we all know that GDPR is here. And it's definitely something that we must be very aware of how, mm -hmm. how we take this data personal. But I like your, your thinking on this, that um, it's one thing you have the data and, and you know it's yours and you don't want to share it. Yeah. But if you decide to share it with the people, then you want to make sure they don't make false interpretation of the data. Because that, that can, even in elite at least, that can be fatal or crucial in your career. So yeah, that's, I think, the, the challenge of the future, how we train people to also to use this new kind of data. And who owns the data too. And who Put owns the athlete, data. You're with a team, all of a sudden you leave, and then yeah. what happens there, you know? Yeah, what, what happens there? Yeah, well, I don't know what's going to happen there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is all the something that, uh, yeah. that, you know, we'll certainly figure out, especially as more and more sports become more on the, on the technical spectrum, mm -hmm. so to speak. It's going to really impact all of us in this business in a big way. So let's talk about, um, Where's the competition? You know, we talk about getting an edge and the athlete doing all the little things to get that edge to be the best, right? Mm -hmm. How far can the edge go? Do you think technology can really take us there? I mean, there's a lot of things out there like, you know, performance enhancing, so to speak. Uh, people might say, well, is technology available for everyone, right? Mm -hmm. is, and only some people have the edge. So where does that figure mm -hmm. as far as some of your research? So I think concerned? as part of the IoT revolution, Mm -hmm. These tools and technologies that were previously available for elite athletes are now in today in an affordable level. So ours is also at a consumer price point. And I'm seeing not only our technology, but all, all similar helping your performance improve, like similar technologies to getting into the consumer level. So that's really nice to see how IoT is democratizing sports science, education, and also competition. Yeah. 
Yeah. What about age? Is this something at all ages, young people? I mean, they're really sort of, you know, we talk about play to podium and how far along do you actually follow an athlete? Do you follow them from yeah. when they're born? You know, mm -hmm. put a little thing on a baby till, you know, when they get into sports and then they can decide based on that tracking mm -hmm. of that. So tell me about uh, your insights yeah, in that area. Yeah, so actually it, it's nice because, um, so we took this holistic approach to design this platform. So we had to work with athletes and we had to work with um, also people from the healthcare, also mm -hmm. people that are very long, young boys. We even have users that are animals, <laughs> monkeys and dogs. Really? So it really yeah. has to be universal yeah. Yeah. or that's yeah. our approach. So yeah, of course, when you have elderly people, then you have to teach them how to use this technology. And that's, yeah. that's something, a challenge that we have to learn and and, and just test it how it works in real, real time. So what are but some challenges you've seen with, the, you know, with that population so far? Uh, the elderly population. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> that's a big market right now too. Yeah, so they, they, I think what they have now as the IoT sensors are the fall detectors. Mm -hmm. So if they fall, um, it alerts something. So I could imagine that it has to be part of the, the clothing that's mm -hmm. always continuously on and monitoring. And, and the, I could imagine a smart house that it will just trigger some kind of signals if you see that something is unexpected ha happening with the behavior of the person. Yeah, absolutely. The competition, is there a lot? Uh, like, how crowded is this space right now? The space, the space is definitely getting more and more hard. So the reason mm -hmm. why we can hear be today is because the IoT sensors, the price is dropping, the sensors are getting much, much and better, and also better, and everything we can just puck into a very small place. But our biggest, so motion capture technology is already exists. Like you have seen cameras, camera system, but they're very, very expensive. Yeah. And so most of our competitors, or the one I know, are actually going for the indie fi uh, film developers to film use develop, this. Yeah, yeah they're mm -hmm. making Lycra suit. And by wearing them, you would get the movement of the actors. So yeah. people, or like, uh, I don't really know anybody who would be focusing on sports and healthcare that's scalable in a consumer level. Mm -hmm. So is this going towards the, the virtual coach? You know, are, <laughs> how are the coaches, are they feeling threatened by this? I know a lot of coaches that I know are using it positively because they see it as an enhancement to their everyday toolbox, as you say. So, but is there a, a section that says, oh, this is gonna take over my life as a coach or <laughs> threaten my federation? So mm -hmm. what, like, what are you seeing? Yeah, I really do think that already, so once you have like more multiple sensor data or even different sensors like heart rate monitors them, yep. they can really become a good uh, virtual coach to you how to move and keep you, mo keep you doing it. But still, I do think trainers and coaches have a future job because helping you with the motivation, that's one of the key, key, key point to keep people doing yeah. sports every day or f for you to, to be and do it every day. Mm -hmm. So I think it, something that, that it's just funny because whenever I'm talking to coaches and I'm telling and showing our system that hey, this can analyze your motion right on your smartphone screen, they suddenly freeze. Are we gonna have a role in the future? And and they will, yeah. and they have to the same as CAT systems help you draw straight lines. 3D printers help you to visualize 3D object. This mm -hmm. is just a toolkit to to help people. Now, with the data, can you, like, is there a, uh, an aspect of it where you can compare yourself to others? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's actually so one of them. how fast am I versus Usain Bolt or something? Yeah. Maybe not that fast, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, also, or for example, I think the comparison rehabilitation. So when you have the ideal motion, how you have to have the rehabilitation process for your shoulder, you can write mm -hmm. a very compare it to the ideal motion and then send it to your doctor. So. Yeah, There's so your doctor has to interpret it too, assuming that they so we, have we can that too. do it numerically already to yeah. see what's the kinematic match. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So in the few minutes we have left, uh, let's talk uh, two final things. Let's talk about the actual business model. I mean, there's a lot of people here that you know perhaps may look to different products to add to their model or or for, or for mm -hmm. your own personal model and as an entrepreneur. So uh, tell me how that's working as you scale and where the market's mm -hmm. going. Yeah. So we are B two B B two B platform company, so we are working with developers, as I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. And so they buy our developer kit, and they start building the motion capture apps, and then we, we, we basically give them uh, just large, many, many notch devices once they decide mm -hmm. to move on. So our biggest partner is actually in the golf space. They built a full-body golf motion swing analyzer. 
and it's also a biomechanics toolkit, so yeah. just to get your perfect, perfect swing. But we have also in baseball, and it's getting more and more popular. Yeah, that's excellent. That's excellent. And what about mental, mental training? Has there any been applications for that? Yeah, because the mental training and mental preparation and sort of, you know, monitoring, you know, some of those, has that been part of that yet? Mental training? Yeah. What, yeah. what, what yeah. exactly? Mental <laughs> stimulation and, and things like that. Has that come up? Um, a, that I have, haven't yeah. really seen. Yet. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. all right, that's a pretty big one. So finally, let's talk about some advice that you would give as an entrepreneur, and there's a lot of uh, people in here mm -hmm. who are obviously taking, taking that journey. What are some of the, like, perhaps the two things that you learn most as an entrepreneur that kind of keeps you going, that you believe will take you to the next level? Yeah, yeah so we are a hardware company, so <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a very nice process. I started in New York and then I took the development back to Hungary and then mm -hmm. I also lived in China for one and a half year to manufacture these devices. And you have to be really adapted to new situations and just pick them up and suddenly learn it and, and just be open. That mm -hmm. would be, and always improve yourself as our ancient, ancient Greek fellows would. Yeah. So that yeah. would be my biggest advice. And in the future, we, talk, we heard a lot about the prior presentation about where, where the e-sports and everything else is going. How far do you think this will go into the future to give the athletes of the future a competitive edge? Mm -hmm. So I think it, it, it's... Uh, that was a flight. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's definitely something that we already seen getting and we are just about to hit the consumer market. Yep. Yeah, we are coming out soon and I think that that's just going to be the first real application that um, you will all see. And it's not only for the elite sports, but I think all in the consumer level. Absolutely. And I really want to see how the both are merging together. And I think there's a lot of advice from the elite at least that already knows how to use these tools and technologies and how to scale that in a consumer level. That's something to, mm -hmm. to look forward. Absolutely. Well, we can certainly take a lot from, uh, from what you've done and uh, apply it to, to many different walks of everyday life. So with that, Esther Oswald, uh, technical founder of Notch Interfaces, thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully, I wish you all the best in the well, future. And thank you, everyone, thank you. for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.